Hey everybody, I'm Ted. In this video I'll try to build a simple MIDI controller with uh, a velocity sensitive sensor. But first, I need to do some shopping. My delivery just arrived. Let's go. See this tiny little thing? It's Teen C4.1. It's gonna be a beating heart of the piano, beating 600 billion times per second. It's amazing. Okay, it's time to start the build. Before I'll start to do anything with my Teen C board, I'll check if it's working properly. If everything is okay, the onboard LED should start blinking after connecting it to USB. Okay, it seems that everything is perfectly fine. Now, first things first, we need to solder pins to Teensy's pinout holes so that we can connect everything later. It's done. Now the same with LCD display.
OK, the next step is building a double velocity sensitive sensor. The project is quite simple. I'm gonna use two copper plates separated with a piece of wood and a copper wire as a switch. I'm gonna connect the copper plates to TNC spinouts and the copper wire to the ground. In resting position, the wire is gonna be connected to lower plate. When key action mechanism hits the wire, it disconnects from the lower plate. In this exact moment, TNC starts to measure time. The wire is lifted by action mechanism all the way up till it hits the upper plate and sends the signal to TNC so it stops measuring time. And as we all know, velocity equals distance over time. Well, actually for our purposes, velocity equals 127 times square root of maximum velocity time over measure time, but the idea is the same. Alright, let's do this.
Okay, it's done. I hope it works. Now it's time to do some programming. First, we need few variables. This is a state of first sensor, which is a lower plate. One means that it's connected to ground. And the second sensor, upper plate, which is initially disconnected, so its state is zero. Time one is the time in microseconds when the copper wire disconnects from the lower plate, and time two is time in microseconds when it touches the upper plate. Time passed is the difference between the two above. We also need a variable for the state of the whole sensor in order to avoid bouncing effect. We're gonna use an LCD display, so we need to include a library. Now let's set two pins as inputs. One pin for the lower plate, and one pin for the upper plate. Ok, now the main code. We need to set instructions for the first situation when the copper wire disconnects from the lower plate. Time 1 will be the exact moment in microseconds when it happens. And of course, we need to change sensor 1 state to 0, which means that it's disconnected. The second situation is when the copper wire touches the upper plate. We set the sensor 2 state to 1, which means that it's connected and the sensor state to 1, which indicates that the copper wire touched the upper plate after disconnecting from the lower plate. This is necessary because the wire bounces several times when hitting the upper plate and we need instructions to be executed only when the wire hits the plate the first time. And of course we need to measure the elapsed time. Now let's make our LCD display to show the results. Finally, the third situation, when the wire disconnects from the upper plate. We need to set the sensor 2 state back to 0. And fourth situation, when the wire touches the lower plate. We need to set the sensor 1 state back to 1 and the sensor state back to 0. And that's it! Now let's compile it and see how it works. Ok, we've got some error. Let's see. Uh huh. This brace is redundant. Now it should be working.
As you could see, the shortest time was about 2400 microseconds. Therefore, we'll set the time of maximum velocity as 2000 microseconds, which is slightly less than I was able to achieve while hitting the sensor with my finger. We need to add a few more variables for velocity. We also need to change the type of time pass variable to float in order to increase accuracy of the calculations. Now let's add instructions that will calculate velocity for MIDI purposes. Maximum velocity in MIDI is 127 and you can't exceed it. Therefore, in case of hitting the sensor faster than maximum velocity, velocity still has to be 127. Now, since velocity curve and fluid synth is quadratic function, we need to correct it and make it linear by extracting a square root of it. We also need to get rid of decimals in the final result. Now let's add the instruction to play the MIDI sound. The note number will be 60, which is middle C. It's gonna be played at the calculated velocity on channel 1. Let's also add a couple of lines to make the LCD display show us velocity of played note. Okay, that's it. Let's compile it and see how it works. seems to be working perfectly fine. Thanks for watching and see you next time. And don't forget to subscribe.